I think I know what will happen in the next Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and oh boy, there's gonna be a lot. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's theory. Now that I've seen the movie, it's time to see what plot holes from the film are going to turn into plot points in the next film. Obviously, this video is going to contain spoilers from the movie, so if you haven't seen it and want to go into it without any spoilers, save this for later and come back after you see it. Everyone who's still here has already seen the movie? Great, let's get right into it. Hey, it's me from the future. While I was trying to finish up editing, MatPat posted a video on the movie that hits a lot of points I make in this video. Now, I do mention a few things that he doesn't, which leads me to a slightly different theory. So rather than scrap some of the work I have right now because it's similar to his, I think it's important to see my whole thought process. So any changes to the script will come from me in the future. Also, if you haven't seen Matt Pat's theory, obviously go check it out after this one. It will be linked in the description below, and I'll remind you at the end too, in case you're like me and forget. Now, back to past me for the theory. So one thing that I felt a little dissatisfied with in this movie was that we really didn't get any closure with Mike's brother. Sure, William Afton did say he killed Mike's brother, Garrett, but why? Where? How? Was he even telling the truth? Spoiler alert for that last question, yes, he was telling the truth, and I have good reason to believe we'll be seeing more of Garrett in the next film. First, why was Garrett chosen to be kidnapped? And I do say chosen because as we see early in the movie, old Steve Raglan, William Afton, recognizes Mike from his last name when looking for a new job. Not only that, Mike uses a Nebraska poster to return to the kidnapping in his dreams. This presumably means that the kidnapping took place in Nebraska and that the movie takes place in a new state altogether. The games take place in Utah, the movie was filmed in Louisiana, and there's a district map of Oklahoma City in Steve Raglan's office. All three are pretty far from Nebraska no matter where it takes place, making it a really far drive just for one kid. Hey, future me again. Matt Pat points out a detail that is super hard to notice, especially for someone like me who watched this in theaters and couldn't pause the movie. He says that the legal documents point towards the movie being in Minnesota. I don't think this disproves my analysis, however, since it's still a considerable drive from Nebraska. I just wanted to let you know that I now know it's in Minnesota since I got a lot of comments for accidentally calling Abby Mike's daughter and not his sister last time. This means that Garrett was targeted specifically for the kidnapping, and in order to find where he's at, we need to find out why. I've seen a few quick theories of people saying that Mike and Garrett's dad is going to be the movie stand-in for Henry. I did like this theory until I realized Mike knew nothing of Freddy's before accepting the job. You would think someone whose father is the co-owner of a popular pizza establishment for kids would know a thing or two about what his dad does. I mean, come on, Mike would have been the coolest kid in school if his dad was Henry. That's like having the classic uncle who works at Nintendo. Unless, of course, he was no longer a co-owner. Hear me out for a second, because I think this leads to Afton's motive for selecting Garrett. I think Mike's father is Henry, but he left the company early on due to the missing children's incident. This would explain why Mike wouldn't know about Freddy's until taking the job and give William motivation for going after Garrett. It's because he blames Henry leaving the company for the downfall of Freddy's. After seeing him blame Vanessa for the events of the movie, I can easily see that he would push the blame of events onto others to either make himself feel better or just to have another manipulation technique in his belt. Future me again. Just wanted to talk about how Matt Pat says that the Schmidt and Afton families have switched children. This is interesting to me because in the games, the crying child, Afton's child, dies to Fredbear. This one event was supposed to domino into him getting revenge and killing Henry's child and starting his descent into a serial murderer. What then leads to him killing in the movies? Well, I'll let Pass Me get back to where he left off because he has a possible explanation. Now that we have a motivation, I think we can go one step further and determine why William turns into a serial murderer. 
We know that in the games we have two missing children's incidents, and I think the movies are going to simplify this to just one, since Vanessa never mentions a second missing children's incident. I also think that we'll get a bite in the next movie, but not the one we've seen from the games. We see the bite of 83 in the games, which leads to the crying child possessing Golden Freddy. Well, we already know from Vanessa's description that five children went missing and we have our five animatronics. Unless our bite of 83 turns out to be a different animatronic, I think the next movie will show us the bite of 87, or at least the movie version. Was that the bite of 87? Now I say the movie version because we know the first movie wasn't afraid to change the dates that we've been studying for years, and I think the second film might do the same, all because of one character, Michael. Now, from what I can recall, the movie doesn't specify Mike's age, so I am making an assumption here, but it is an educated one. Mike is played by Josh Hutcherson in the movie, and Josh's current age is 31. The wiki doesn't have a solid number, but does say late 20s or early 30s. So what we're gonna do is use 30 since it's close to Josh's current age and is pretty central in the late 20s, early 30s range. Michael is 12 when his brother gets kidnapped, meaning that his brother gets kidnapped in 1982. Vanessa doesn't really specify when the missing children's incident takes place, she just says it takes place in the 80s. I think the missing children's incident takes place close to 82, and our bite of 87 really takes place before that. Why? Because William will be the bite victim. Think about it. William says the famous, I always come back before getting spring locked. That implies that something happened in his past for him to miraculously come back from. If he's the bite victim, not only does that give him something to come back from, he also would receive a brain injury that could change him from a calm, collected, and intelligent man to a murderous, manipulative monster. Me from the future again. MatPat mentioned something very interesting about this scene, and I think both of these theories need to combine to work properly. MatPat says that Afton is knowledgeable in possession and spirits in the movies because he could talk to and control the kids. This was a pretty key detail I completely missed, but I think MatPat missed a key word Afton said. Afton's famous line is, I always come back. That phrasing is very specific because he could have been more like the Terminator and said, I'll be back, but he doesn't. He specifically says, I always come back. That phrasing is very specific because always still implies he came back from something else in the past. I think that something was the bite, causing him to lose his frontal lobe, almost die, and turn into a child murderer. I think this is a good time to say that if you're enjoying the video, pull the William Afton and stab that subscribe button to get more of me in the future. Alright, back to the theory. So we'll see William get bit, the missing children's incident, Henry leaving the company, and William kidnapping Garrett. But now we need to know what happened to Garrett. Specifically, why was he kidnapped instead of just killed? Well, I think one of the songs in the credits is hinting at where Garrett is in these films. I'll play a few notes from it and you tell me what it reminds you of. Sound familiar? It's the music from the puppet's music box. Not only that, the music slows until it eventually stops at the end, almost like someone stopped winding the music box. That's right, Garrett was turned into the puppet. With the first five children dead and stuffed, their spirits had possessed the animatronics, causing them to get a little quirky. With no kids in the pizzeria, William noticed that the animatronics began acting odd and theorized that the dead children had changed the animatronics somehow, but he had to know for sure. Well, William kidnaps Garrett to get back at Henry and to test his theory. William takes him back to the pizzeria only to slaughter him and link his spirit with the puppet. Alright, MatPat does a good job of destroying this point by pointing out that Freddy's is open in the picture with Vanessa. I do think my logic could still be used in reverse, however. With Afton's bite making him more unstable, he begins lashing out on Henry, causing Henry to leave the company, 
or just look for some extended leave from work. William then kidnaps and kills Garrett and discovers from his death that possession is a thing and decides to test his theory on more children. Now, do I expect you to believe me with just a song that's played at the end of the movie and a little story of what I think happened? Well, I'd like you to, but no, I don't. I do, however, think that It's Me written in the mirror is a dead giveaway that he's dead and, well, that it's him. I can already hear someone in the comments, they're either saying he's in Golden Freddy or he's in Balloon Boy, but I don't think either are the case. We see the spirit possessing Golden Freddy clear as day in the movie. I know someone is gonna die on that hill that Golden Freddy has two spirits in him because only one eye is glowing and whatever else, and while I like the theory of Golden Freddy having two spirits in the games, I don't think that transfers to the movies. Abby can see the spirits and never once draws Garrett with the other five spirits. Plus, you can argue that because there is only one eye glowing, that there isn't another spirit in Golden Freddy. Now, why don't I think he's Balloon Boy? Well, besides that the Balloon Boy we see in the movie is just a toy and not an animatronic, I think Balloon Boy was Afton making a joke. Think about it. Afton throws it into Mike's locker because he knows if Mike opens it, it'll scare the hell out of him. He then does it again in the closet to make Mike feel uneasy because that's the place where he can find evidence of the animatronics killing. You know, like the blood he finds traces of in the window and quickly brushes off? After all, did you expect Bonnie to be the one to clean up the mess? The mid credit scene I'm guessing is kind of like the non-canon endings in the game just put there for fun. I also believe Garrett is much closer than we think in the movie. First, Mike says his dreams are more vivid and that he feels like he's closer to Garrett in the pizzeria. Second, we have the scene with It's Me in the mirror. Notice anything else in this scene? You should, it's pretty obvious. Everything that uses electricity is freaking out in the room. The lights, the monitors, even the PA system. William specifically calls out that the power to the building doesn't work well and that Mike will need to flip the switch in his office to reset it. Now this might be a bit of a stretch with the limited information we have from the movie, but I think that the puppet is in a secret bunker under the pizzeria and the power problems are caused by whatever device is keeping the puppet under control. Why a secret bunker? Well, we know that it has to be close to the pizzeria due to the power problems and Garrett trying to communicate with Mike, but we see the outside of the pizzeria and there aren't many buildings close by. We can also use Sister Location as an example from the games to prove that the franchise isn't new to the concept of underground bunkers. But I think the two most important clues we get are from the Afton family. Vanessa never mentions any other Freddy's location in the movie, so unlike the games, I don't think we'll be seeing the franchise move locations for the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The other piece of evidence I have for the secret bunker is our ending fight in the movie. Specifically, where did Afton come from in the first place? Are we supposed to believe he drove here, put on the spring lock suit, and got into the building without anyone noticing? We see almost every inch of the restaurant and see no sign of the spring lock suit until he's wearing it, so he had to bring it from somewhere. I think he and the suit came from the bunker, perhaps experimenting on the puppet and the other animatronics in the basement until he decided to reveal himself to Mike and Abby. That's my prediction for the next movie. Afton gets bit, it turns him into a serial murderer, Henry leaves the company, the company shuts down, William kidnaps Garrett, turns him into the puppet, and builds a secret bunker under the pizzeria in order to contain and do more experiments on it and possibly other animatronics. There are two things that don't yet fit into this theory and I would like your help with them. First. How does Vanessa fit into this? Is she helping with the murders? Does she just help cover them up with her power in the police force? Is she really even an Afton? Because if you don't know, her last name is Shelly. The other thing I don't yet have an answer for is Henry. It is confirmed that Mike's mother died, but Mike's father is still around. We just don't know where. I would think that Henry is taking this time to try and come up with a plan to beat William, but it doesn't make any sense to me that he wouldn't help Mike and Abby while he's planning. Mike is definitely struggling to take care of Abby on his own and could 
really use the assistance from his dad while raising her. After all, he almost gave her away to the animatronics in order to find the person who kidnapped his brother. Plus, I don't think he entirely thought that through. Hey police, I know this case has been closed for almost 20 years, but I just remember what the guy looked like who stole my brother. Anyway, thanks for watching till the end. This is your friendly reminder to go watch MatPat's video if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts on the theory with a comment or tell me how the movie was. I personally give it a 7 out of 10 because of those small plot holes, but I understand why they're there. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more of me in the future. My theory playlist should be on the screen as well as a video YouTube thinks you'll like from me. Thanks again for making it to the end, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!